In our previous video, we have discussed about scan cell, scan chain, and understood what is controllability and observability with respect to DFT. In this video, we will discuss about faults we test in DFT and its type. Welcome to DFT Decoded, where we demystify the fascinating world of design for test. Hello, folks. This is Ankit, and I'm passionate about bridging the gap between technology and understanding. With a background in DFT, I created this channel to help engineers, students, and tech enthusiasts navigate the integral world of DFT. I'll try to explain DFT, which is a crucial part of chip design, in a most simplified way. I'll cover all theoretical and technical concepts, as well as we'll discuss lot of problems and issues we faced in DFT as an engineer, and try to explain the solution in a most simplified way. Any product that is not manufactured as a way it is supposed to is said to be defective. Similar, there can be faults on chip also due to some manufacturing defects. Over years of experiments and observations, engineers have categorized these manufacturing defects and called them fault models. Let's understand need of fault models. We make models that represents actual product. For example, we make models of building before constructing it, and taking that model as a guide, we build actual buildings. In semiconductor industry, also fault models provide a structured way to represent and analyze potential defects in a circuit during testing. Types of fault models: there are majorly three types of. Three types of faults we detect in DFT. First one is a speed fault model. This type of model depicts the faults when your chip works with functional clock. Second one is functional fault model. This model is related to functionality of a chip, which means if your chip has any functional fault, it will lead to malfunction of chip. Third one is current fault model. This model is related to current leakage issues in IC. Now we will discuss in detail about these three faults individually. Let's start with functional fault model. As told earlier, fault model that is related to functioning of a chip is called functional fault model. There are two types of functional fault. First is staccato fault. Second is toggle fault. What is staccato fault? Here we can see Winnie the Pooh got stuck in the wall. Similar in chip also, if any logic gate node got stuck to a fixed value, that node is said to be at staccato fault. There are two types of staccato fault: staccato zero and staccato one. In a digital world, we have either zero or one as input or output. Zero means ground and one means power supply. If a node is always at one, that node is said to be at staccato one. In a figure, we can see output of OR gate is staccato one. Irrespective of values of A and B, Z will be always be at value one due to staccato one fault. Similar, if a node is always at zero, that node is said to be at zero. In a figure, we can see output of OR gate is staccato zero. Irrespective of values of A and B, Z will be always be at zero due to staccato zero fault. Second type of functional fault is toggle fault. Let's understand what is toggle fault. Toggle means changing value either from one to zero or from zero to one. A toggle fault occurs when a node in a circuit fails to switch its value. In below example, if Z pin of OR gate fails to switch from 1 to 0 or from 0 to 1, then Z pin or node can set to be at toggle fault. What are the reasons that can lead to toggle fault in circuit? Stuck at faults, missing connections between nodes weak signals on nodes, clogging issues, preventing flip-flops from toggling. Staccato fault is a superset of toggle fault. That is, if a node is having 
stack at fault then for sure it will have toggle fault but vice versa is not true we have completed functional faults and its type now we will discuss about current fault model any fault that is related to leakage of current is called current fault model it has only one type iddq fault model iddq fault testing measures the excessive current to find out that effect now before moving further here i want to explain about no load condition in the figure we are seeing a bulb is connected to a battery here bulb is the load it will consume power from battery which will lead to flow of current if we remove load that is bulb there will be no flow of current now the circuit can be set to at quiescent condition here we have a figure of cmos inverter v in is the input signal and v out is the output idd is the current from vdd supply q is the quiescent point hence name idd q current flowing from ground when the ic is in either a no load condition or non switching condition is called quiescent current now switching means no, non switching means when v in is stable to a fixed value for a long time and we don't change its value if we keep v in equal to 1 for some time then v out will be zero cmos inverter will be at quiescent condition because there is no load at v out and v in is also stable for a long time then current flowing from ground to v out is quiescent current pros of iddq fault chips that are free from functional and speed fault model might get fail after some time of use that's why iddq fault test second is iddq fault can use to identify bridging fault now the question comes in mind how iddq fault is tested we have a cmos buffer here made by connecting back to back cmos inverter output of first inverter is going as a input for second inverter supplying v in equal 1 volt in dft this is done by applying test vectors to input pins after some time final value of z will be zero as inverter pmos is off as we can see for first inverter pmos is off and nmos is on and v out is equal to 1 as second as in second inverter pmos is on and nmos is off transistor will work like a open circuit so no current will flow through them only on transistors will work ideally for second inverter as v out is 1 all current will flow flow from vdd to v out similarly in ideal condition for first inverter as n mos is on z will be at 0 volt and no current will flow from z to ground but if an ic is defected and having iddq fault then some current will flow to other paths as well shown in figure due to defect in circle transistor there is an leakage in the current and it's going to first inverter on transistor there will be a non zero value of iddq for this transistor that's how we detect a iddq fault by measuring iddq current why iddq testing is important the importance of this comes when you are looking to make your chip design efficient when not in full operation this is especially important when you are looking at variables or iot devices that need to last long periods of time on a battery power we need to make sure that these devices do not consume much power when they are in standby mode so that's all about iodq fault so far we have discussed about functional faults and its type and current fault model that is iddq fault i hope you find this video helpful 
please give your feedback and valuable suggestions thank you